generally, if you're going to classify the contamination in a phosphate ester fluid, you have your acid, and then you have your solid contamination, and then you have water, and then you'd have dissolved uh, contamination. So right away, now that we have four different types of contaminants that can be in these fluids, you'll find that existing systems are not managing anything other than the acid number to some degree and the solid contamination to some degree. So the existing approaches to maintenance have severe limitations. These fluids break down and generate acid. A normal turbine lubricant would last years uh, and not generate acid. These fluids will generate acids in less than a month. They are generating sufficient quantities of acid. And for this reason, the acid number is very carefully monitored in these systems. And acid removal systems are a necessity in this application. One of the main pathways to breakdown is water. And because of the unique fluid properties of phosphate ester, it will take as much water out of atmosphere as it comes into contact with. So it's not like a normal lubricant. A uh, normal lubricant would say have, you know, 200 ppm would be considered extremely high in a lube oil application. Phosphate esters will, will grab 2000 ppm out of atmosphere alone with no additional water ingress. So as long as these fluids are connected to atmosphere, you are not going to have control of them. So what we have to do is um, eliminate that failure pathway by putting a TMR on there, which is going to generate high purity nitrogen from a regular compressed air source, and it's going to blanket the reservoir, and it's going to exhaust out the breather element. So we have eliminated atmosphere contact with the EHC fluid. So that eliminates the fluid's ability to grab water out of atmosphere which reduces significantly how much contamination is entering the system in the first place. I always go for the 80-20 rule, so we can get a lot of the big contamination out of the system just by using an upgraded particulate filter. And many of the particulate filters that are used on EHC fluids are not compatible with the fluids themselves. I know that sounds hard to believe, but paper, in materials like cork seals, um, this is incompatible with EHC fluid. So if you're going to spend the money on filters to remove the solid contamination, you may as well invest in filters that will actually do the job or have compatible materials with the fluid and, and have a high efficiency rating. And that's going to take out everything largely above four microns, the large particles. You can't really get below that micron rating effectively with conventional media particulate filters. But what we find in EHC fluids is that 90% of the contamination is below one micron and therefore below the range of uh, mechanical filters. So for this reason, the only way that you can remove this contamination is using electrostatic oil cleaners. And electrostatics um, have the ability to remove particles by their mass instead of their physical size. So anything with mass can be directed towards either a, a grounded plate or a charged plate. And in this case, we use the ECR. With acid contamination, solid contamination, dissolved contamination, and water, we would put solutions in for each of those four categories of contamination and manage those levels within a very tight parameter.